Hey everybody, welcome to this episode of Black Leather Couch. Uh, today's guests are Michael Dirks, he's one of the guitarists from Guar, and his buddy George Lawhorn, who's a ghost hunter. Um, we're talking to them about a project they were working on together. Uh, we talked to Dirks about Guarbecue and uh, the new project Guar Bar, a restaurant they're opening up in Richmond. Um, had a good time having them on the couch, just shooting the shit with them, and uh, check it out. Always trying to get interesting people on the couch, and <laughs> you failed miserably. I yeah. failed miserably. I got the most interesting person that I've ever met, and that was yesterday. No. Yes. Um, <laughs> well, is... let's. I'm gonna skip over all the basic bullshit about you know where were you born, where'd you come from. And that's the best part. <laughs> well, not for him, not for George. <laughs> and nobody, and nobody knows who I am. Yeah, he's just gonna be that guy. We're gonna call you his George assistant. George came from Florida. Sidekick. <laughs> That's how we should do it. You tell me everything about him, and he tells me everything about you. We get Wikipedia. <laughs> yeah, let me pull that up. George was born in a video update in South Florida. <laughs> he was raised by chimpanzees. Um, Just one. Uh, shaved or not a, shaved? A, sing, a single mother chimpanzee. <laughs> Waxed. She had to. She had to work. The, she had to work the clubs. She was, Everyone's <laughs> heard about that dancing chimpanzee. She really knew how to work a bowl. Mm. I hear she knew how to work a banana as well. Oh, yes. But um bum. Um by so, a pole we mean a pole. <laughs> yes. By pole. banana. Eastern European. And by Western. banana I meant cock, so it's okay. <laughs> it was a poke too. <laughs> um so the biggest thing right now going on is uh the start of war bar. Yes. How is that uh, progressing? Uh well what is it first? Because <laughs> I I know the basics, but uh, other people may not. Um Gore Bar is an ideal we've been bouncing around for a really long time. Um, I guess, I know just since the original Gore theme was written, that was one of the main lines that, well, we play guitar and we'll trash your bar. The Gore Bar just is something that had to happen just because it rhymes. <laughs> um, <laughs> but if it rhymes, it must be yeah. made. But no, I've, I've been working in restaurants since I was like, 14 years old, my first job was on the Outer Banks, washing dishes in a giant mega restaurant down there, and... That seems to be a, a running theme for a lot of musicians. Yeah, it's, it is. Like, <laughs> you kind of have to work the service yeah. industry. Yeah, like most um, actors and models work in front of house, and most musicians work in the kitchen. <laughs> so, uh, it's because it's the kind of work that you can keep, you know, like you can get a job as a dishwasher and go out on tour and come back and still have a job. Yeah. So, I've been doing that kind of work ever since I've been in Gore, and I really enjoy it. Is it something you uh, meant to do, or, I mean, did you go to school for culinary arts or anything like um, that, or was it a... I didn't, but my sister did, and my family, my whole family, I came from a family of cooks, we were really, everything in my family sort of centers around food. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing you're not twice the size there. Uh, <laughs> but... <laughs> You know, our holidays, like, we didn't really, it wasn't about exchanging gifts at Christmas. It was about the amazing feasts we would have. And Yeah, a lot of families are that way, though. Yeah. But, um, and my sister did go on to culinary, to culinary school, and she was the head chef at the Avalon for about 20 years. And a lot of people, when she first started cooking in Richmond, it was really a different food scene than it is now. I mean, Richmond has become... Yeah, it kind of explodes. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's an amazing food scene right now. And a lot of people kind of credit my sister with bringing casual fine dining to Richmond. Yeah. You know, it's like there were, you know, you had the Jefferson and then you had just really crappy dives. <laughs> yeah. It, dining. Is she running something currently? She retired from the rest, from working, from restaurant work and is now still cooking, but she cooks in a head trauma rehabilitation center where she's. Huh responsible for all the food for about 25 or 30 patients and hmm. 
she enjoys that because she still gets to cook and do what she loves, but she doesn't have the pressure yeah. of being in a restaurant. So now you'd like to take that pressure on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, have you ever run your own place like that before, or is this going to be... No, it's going to be the first time. I mean, I've pretty much worked every position in a restaurant except for owner. So. <laughs> well, so now you'll have to learn it all over again. Now, is it just going to be you... Run, I mean, run um, the show, or is it kind of a joint effort? Or it's um, the members of like we as Slave Pit have teamed up with um, uh, with Travis Croxton, who was voted Restaurant Tour of the Year um, for Richmond last year. Was it last year? Yeah, yeah. I remember the name from um, the LBs awarded him that, and he's he um, owns Rappahannock and Tappahannock and Eat the Rich. Uh, he's partners with Top Chef Mike Isabella at Graffiato's. Um, so he's doing, got his finger in a lot of pies, and he's like helping us out, like so to speak. Yeah. So is that a uh, is that a driving force behind it that you've got somebody like that with it, or is it? I think is it's, it, it gives us a lot of people out. Yeah, it's giving us a lot more confidence that yeah. we can actually do it because we're teamed up with people that actually know what they're doing. You know, <laughs> instead of well, I remember reading somewhere too that you guys are going to be serving like. Is it gourmet junk food? Is that how you're describing it? Yeah, gourmet junk food is kind of what I came up with. And actually, George was part of the inspiration for that. You know, it's like, <laughs> I'm really into food and a foodie, and I like seek out strange and unique ingredients and weird stuff. But George, like, won't, like, eats hamburgers and pizza, and his big treat is, like, pizza. That's exotic food for him, so. What the hell? Yeah, pineapple, <laughs> crazy stuff. So my idea is to kind of do, to reinvent these junk, crappy American foods and just do them from scratch. Like we're going to make our own hot dogs and smoke them in-house. And yeah, like I heard like, like you guys were talking about a guar-sized grinder or something like that. That's how it was Yeah, we'll, we'll like grind our, our own meat for, for hot dogs and sausages and hamburgers. And you know, we're going to be doing our barbecue, which has been went over really well. And the sauce is like, everyone's really loving the barbecue sauce, but we're going to do like you know, food, like, we're going to try to bake our own Twinkies and make homemade Cheetos and, Dor like, Cool Ranch chips there. And you know. <laughs> That's cool. But So kind of a, a, a slave pit take on all the, the common stuff. Now, you've been, you were with War from almost the beginning, right? Yeah, I joined um, right after the first album came out. Okay. I did all the touring for Hello, and, and I've been on every album since. So kind of a goofier question, then. Did you ever think it would... <laughs> bring you back full circle to the restaurant business or is that um <laughs> I mean you guys have always just been goofy and fun about everything anyway so it's kind of I don't want to say it's fitting but it's more like eh it's what they're gonna, you know, they're gonna do what they're gonna do kind of thing so <laughs> yeah I mean originally when I first joined I thought I was gonna join this band and go out and see California once or twice and then that'll be it you know I dropped out of VCU thought I was taking a year off to go on tour and go out to California and here it is almost 30 years later <laughs> I'm still doing it but yeah I mean I was always thinking like yeah once I'm done with Gore I'll it'd be really cool to open a restaurant and so now so it hasn't been outside the realm of no it's something that I've always do. been like banging around and like a few years ago we started looking for um Gore's always had a slave pit which has been our base of operations where we build our um, props and um, practice and record our albums. And we've always rented places, so we wanted to look into like buying a place. So we were looking at all these possibilities for places to buy, and some of them were just huge. And we're like, wow, what are we going to do with all this space? And I was like, we should have part of it as a restaurant. <laughs> and like, <laughs> People were like, what are you talking about? But Dave actually got really excited about that concept. And, you know, the more... Actually, buying the building didn't work out yet. We're still looking, but um, for for Gwar, yeah. um, but but um, the idea of the Gore Bar like kind of took root in his mind as well. And he um, when he met up with a uh, old friend of his from high school, got in touch with him, who's uh, Jonathan Staples, who owns like a dozen restaurants in D.C. and he's partners with um, Brian Boltaggio from Top Chef Masters and. Mike Isabella and a bunch of, he's just got all these multi-million dollar restaurants in D.C. and he's this huge restaurateur. And he kind of approached Dave with the idea of like, have you guys ever thought of doing a war bar? And Dave's like, oh my God, yes! <laughs> we thought about it so much. 
And of course, with his over over the top enthusiasm, like they <laughs> got both got, talked each other up, so they got, both got super excited. And Jonathan wanted to get involved and help us out, and he um, he introduced us to Travis and and some people that we needed to go to get this happening. Jonathan actually helped us find the building, and he bought the building at Clay Street. So is that what's, yeah? That was the other question I had. Um, I saw recently you guys were there, like mapping it out or looking at stuff and, yeah. and working on some stuff. Where is it actually going to be located? It's in Jackson Ward. Is it's, it? Yeah, it's this really cool um, triangle building right across from Abner Park. And it's kind of a little standalone building, so it's not like you you know, know, all, that, all the row houses. Everything else is a row house, and then you get to this, and it's like it's shunned by all the other <laughs> buildings. It's like fitting. stands alone all by itself. Well, that way you won't have neighbors complaining. <laughs> Yeah, it's actually across the street from a daycare center, which nice. is cool. So it's where we can get our um, daily specials. <laughs> ah. So did you? Um, yeah, you were there. I think you were there today, weren't you? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I've been there. We've been working on it for the past few weeks, doing demolition. And, oh, really? Yeah. Cool. So, um, have you got it all kind of mapped out how you want it, or is it still a? Work it's in progress? a work in progress. We're designing kind of as we're going. We're working with um local guy Barry Griffin, who's. I'm from Griffin, Griffin Customs, and he's helping us with the design, doing a it's lot like of it. like a fabricator kind of thing? Yeah. yeah. Um, what about, uh, I mean, I know it's it's going to be Guar themed, obviously, but how, uh, like, are you planning on having, like, a stage kind of set up, too, or a lot of restaurants have, like, a yeah, place it's, set aside? Um, what we're eventually thinking about doing is we actually have a lot um, attached to the building. So we have property out back that we're thinking about turning into a beer garden. Oh, okay. So eventually we'd like to have an outdoor stage and be able to do shows in the lot there. And well, actually it's a two-story building with bars on both floors. And so we're going to have, eventually, not, not when we first open, but we're going to have a deck off the second floor that overlooks the beer garden. Like a stage? Well, you're going to be able to like stand up there and look down upon the, oh, gotcha. the stage. and gotcha. should be able to hold like several hundred people back there. Cool. Which would be... Kind of a new base of operations eventually, you hope, or um, is that not going to be big enough? For yeah, what it's not talking? big enough to yeah. house Gore. But <laughs> is is anything really big enough to house Gore? <laughs> um, I had some. Uh, I was gonna say I, I almost went out and got some uh, fan questions before uh, you guys got here, but I was worried that uh, things may not pan together since George here decided to take ill the last time we were trying to do something. Um, have you met any of the neighbors and stuff like that? Has, has people been receptive in the area? Or? Yeah, actually, um, a lot of people been the. It's one side down the one street is actually residences, and I haven't met too many of the people that live there. I met a few people actually. Our next door neighbor is a good friend friend of mine. who's a chef at Post Bellum, so okay, she's super excited about having us next door. <laughs> then right across on the other side is a bicycle food delivery place, so we're gonna have like. Yeah. Build in delivery guys. Nice. Make them dress up for each other's deliveries. <laughs> and then the guy from the Gelato Street down the store, no, built, putting in the Gelato Street down the street, at uh, Gelato Store down the street came by and he was super excited to have us. And another guy who lives across the street came by. And he was like, Oh, I'm going to have to renew my lease. I was going to move out. But if you guys are coming in, I'm going to stay. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, And you're right, what you said earlier, Richmond's just kind of coming to their own with a bunch of different um, restaurants and real specific kind of venues and stuff like that. So yeah. it's actually like perfect timing for getting this thing rolling. So I was actually pretty excited myself. I was like, wow, we need things like this because Richmond will reinvent itself every couple of years and then stagnate and then do it again. So yeah, this is, this is going to be pretty cool, I think. Yeah, it's um, going to be really cool. I think it's going to be one of the coolest restaurants. <laughs> And you're not biased at all. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> um, do you guys, I mean, I, I know I'm getting into more specifics about it, but do you have, I mean, I know you've got ideas for some of the food and stuff like that, but do you have, like, uh, other than layout, do you have, like, are you going to make the waitresses dress up and stuff like that? Because, like, yeah, I mean, I don't, you I don't guys have actually been a part of my life in and out over the years just indirectly because I went to school with a guy that, I guess, loaded for you guys way back in the day and... Um, when my friend had her store down in Richmond, uh, Sly Menster came down and um, you guys, I think, were playing Twisters or something and she was a part of that. And like, it's just been like really on the outside cusp of everything for as long as I can remember. So 
all this stuff has been really kind of funny to to see it coming to fruition. But do you guys have plans for stuff like that, or is it? Well, we've debated on whether we would have the waitresses actually like in chainmail bikinis and stuff like that. But I think we kind of figured that that might be a little bit too over the top. We want to still be able to have people come in and feel comfortable just eating there. Family friendly. Gonna, yeah. So Some quasi what? quasi yeah. family friendly. How about advanced family yeah. friendly? <laughs> the kind of families that come to barbecue. Yeah, exactly. Progressive, progressive families. It's, yeah. yeah, it's like barbecues, kind of family friendly. <laughs> Except for some of the band names. Yeah. yeah, that's what I was. That's one of the questions, or one of the things I was talking to my wife about was. It's Manson family friendly. There yeah, you go. Exactly. There you go. That put that right in the front of the uh, <laughs> right in the front of the menu. Um. So with all that going on, you've also got. Uh, band stuff. You guys are going to be performing at Barbecue. Yeah. Um, for people that don't know, what's a little bit of the history of Barbecue too? Since I guess Barbecue helped kind of push this out too because of the sauce and all the other yeah, stuff. Yeah, that is more. Yeah, so I'm kind of going backwards. But what? Uh, how did Barbecue come to be um, originally? Well, we used to have or the slate pit used to be located on Chamberlain Avenue. We had a big warehouse there with a yard and it seemed like every summer we would kind of throw these parties there and just have bands it was just sort of a word of mouth thing and we would buy a few kegs and it's actually um one year was lamb of god's very first show <laughs> was nice. playing at barbecue and but we would do that every once in a while and it was who's that who um yeah uh, you probably remember that as burn the yes oh, oh yeah those guys <laughs> But after we moved out of Chamberlain, we didn't have the yard anymore, and, you know, people would still, you know, they would kind of... Hey, grew you guys doing they, that again? Yeah, it grew in people's memory, and yeah. just, like, people that weren't there would hear about them, like, oh, and it's, like, became these legendary parties that, you know, because <laughs> people... Best way know, for things to happen. <laughs> and so I kind of wanted to try to re reignite that and start it up again, so we did one um, five years ago down at the bike lot, and... You know, we just played it, did a rock show, and got a bunch of bands to play, and try to put together some other activities like the Spew Olympics, and we had a um, American A Hole karaoke contest and <laughs> stuff like that, and just try to make it like a fun type show, but like you know, totally low budget punk rock thing. You know, yeah. we, we got about like 500 people out there. Damn, and baked everyone on the asphalt. Yeah, yeah it was super hot. And, <laughs> We only had one porta potty. <laughs> no <laughs> God. <laughs> but it was a lot of fun. So we um kept doing it. The next year we tried to get Haddad's and um and that was the year that Best Friends Day had the troubles with like people slashing tires and the police tried to shut it down and Where, some, at, at, at Haddad's. Really? Yeah. Best Friends I, I vaguely remember that. Best Friends Day had been doing their, their show out at Haddad's, and like it was really, really cool vibe they created out there. Yeah. And that was How did you manage to get Guar in there after <laughs> something like that? Well, that was the thing. Well, this will be fun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that stuff, Best Friends, yeah. so that's so, cool. Yeah. So that year, the, um, actually, Henrico came down on us and said, no, you cannot do this. Where? At the at Haddad's. At Haddad's. Oh, yeah. So we had, to, we had to move to the National. So our second year was at the National. So it was more like a show with 10 yeah. bands on it instead of being like an outdoor festival type thing. But then that year, too, but, the original date at Haddad's, just to make sure there was a hurricane that weekend. Oh, yeah, too. that's right. So, so if like... we hadn't been moved to um, <laughs> into the National, it would have been rained out. So yeah. we, got, we got lucky. Yeah. But then the third year, um, Best Friends Day decided to kind of pack it in because they, you know, they created something re really incredible. But it was becoming more, wasn't becoming what they wanted, what they envisioned originally. Now who started that? Um, a lot of people, but um, Tony Foresta and Ward Teff from um, Chop Suey, and um, and I don't know, I. I should know all the people involved, but I don't. Well, I just but Aaron <laughs> was it, it was something similar though, right? It was more of a yeah, like it, was, it party. was a punk rock festival party, yeah. And, and theirs had grown to like they were doing it at events all over the city, and it was really really cool thing. But just the name is a misnomer though. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of I was like, I think I remember that too, but it was like they almost made it sound like it was something uh, way nicer than. <laughs> <laughs> 
Hey, it was. It was about best friends and you know getting really really drunk and throwing. That's what each best other friends do. Yeah. yeah. It, it, I slash my best friend's tires all the time. Right? So, so what what did it take to convince the odds to let you guys do it, or was it just uh, um, because the other guys pulled out and didn't want to do it there anymore, or weren't doing it there anymore? Yeah. Well, we had to, we went through all the proper channels and got you know it was really kind of a big hassle, but we went. You know, to the police and to all the Henrico planning committees, and got all the proper permits to put on a show. And so it's like no one, so everything was completely above board and legal. So, did you guys have to uh, let the crowd know to not f it up? <laughs> <laughs> no, but we had we had to hire a lot of off-duty police officers. Yeah, so they kinda, keep them in check for you. They kind of knew not to screw up too bad, but. You know. <laughs> There was still a lot of people on, so now this is, this on substances diving into the lake. It's great. Yeah. To, it's great to go online and see all these people like it, from all over the country coming to Richmond for this event, and they're all like, "Man, when I get there, I'm gonna be naked. I'm gonna be on so much acid. <laughs> I'm gonna be like, oh!" And then they like show up at the gate, and they see the cops, and just go, "Oh, well, it's nice to see you." I'll get some beer. Yeah. So what year is this now? This is the fifth, sixth. This is gonna be yeah. We're going in the fifth year. Fifth year this year. Yeah, I thought twenty ten was the first one. Was this four? Twenty ten. Yeah, it was twenty ten. Yeah. But okay, that was the first one. Zero. Oh, so it's like your first zero. birthday. You're from Don't, zero to one. I'm you're not. not so I, technically, I, you still count that as one, but. <laughs> I, I, I don't math. <laughs> So I even though can't it's bring 2014, it's yeah, yeah. still 5, <laughs> 0, 1, 4, 11, or 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, I don't know 5. What's going on. <laughs> yeah. See, yeah. you got schooled already. Man. <laughs> so that's good. Now this year, it's, I mean, I just, I, as a matter of fact, I uh, was listening to Liquid Metal on Sirius, and they had something about, uh, they played some band, and... Uh, I hadn't heard in a long time, and I was really excited because apparently Body Count's going to be there. And I was like, wait a minute, are they even still a thing? He's like a TV star now, what the hell? Yep. So I saw that, and then I went on and looked at the lineup again, because I think the last time I looked at the site, they the, the full lineup hadn't been posted yet. And uh, sure enough, there they were listed. I, actually, I posted something online, and all my friends were like, no, they're going to be there. And I, I was like, where are you seeing this? So that's pretty cool, too. How did that, I mean, you guys got... Uh, but I mean, I know some of the bands that are there. You guys are just friends with automatically. Is, yeah. is that the same thing with things no, like that? No, we, we met Ice T a long time ago. I wouldn't classify us as friends. <laughs> Dave loves Body Count. Yeah, the thing oh, is, okay. like the last tour, every night, like they would be jamming Body Count in the in the um, before we went on stage in the dressing room, and he would actually like at the end of the song, he demanded that our sound guy played um, Midnight Ice T's Midnight. And sometimes he would just go out there and like, like stand on stage and like sing along with it after our show was over. That's awesome. He was just like that was his thing. It was like he was still an Ice T on the last tour and like that's killer. And we got back from Japan and saw that um, Ice T was doing oh, some big metal festival. Yeah, the new album coming out too. Yeah, he's got a new album. Yeah, in a couple of weeks actually. So we saw they were touring and we're like, let's try to get body count. We're like, <laughs> yeah, <awesome>. right. <laughs> and we got in touch with him. And we're like, yeah, sure. Sweet. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Is, isn't Coco going to be there too? Yeah, I think Coco is going to be there doing an autograph Coco signing. Fans, oh yeah. boy! <laughs> Completely, uh, just make her a member of uh, of Guar. Yeah, Dress her up. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. All right, so there's I think there's another special guest band that we haven't announced yet, so we're still saving one more. Oh, surprise! You can totally there. announce it on here. I can't. Bradley oh. kill me if I blew it. Blew the announcement. Uh, well, you can at least announce that there will be an announcement. How about that? There yes, you go. There will be a special last minute band added to it. Sweet. Um, now, are you involved in all the specifics of that stuff, or do you guys have like a company that handles the logistics, or is it really just. It's, you guys have always been, I don't want to say mom and pop, but that's pretty much the only way to describe it. It's yeah, it's yeah, self made. Yeah, and do it yourself, yeah. Do it yourself, yeah, you go, <laughs> DIY. Yeah. So, so you guys are handling all the logistics of that, permits and all that shit? Yep. Yeah, that's that's love for the fans right there then too because all the all the headaches that that shit creates I'm sure is no fun. Yeah. <laughs> but um, you've got like I said, you guys have always got a lot of shit going on, uh, staying creative and staying fun. So that bridges to the next thing, which is why George is here too. Oh. Huh? Uh, what? 
I'm here beer. for the beer. <laughs> I came for the beer and the bitches. Um, you, you guys have bitches? got a... Uh, well, if I call her that, she kicks my ass. <laughs> um, <laughs> but you guys have got a project between the two of you coming up. Yes. Well, it's we've been, been working on it for a while. Um, yeah. It's like five years now. <laughs> <laughs> well, George is a slow learner, so we're... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a quick study. Yeah. Now, I've seen that you've been actually going around. Uh, maybe it's just that it's been popping up recently more. You've been hitting a lot of locations for your project, which... Well, that's him just going out. I'm just, <laughs> just going out just doing me. shit. That's what just he does. normal me. Is, well, it's uh, funny because yeah. like, you and I met because a mutual friend told me you were doing something and that I might be able to help, right. et cetera, et cetera. And that was like a year or so ago, but... It's been a while since yeah. we started this. Yeah. But the uh, the project itself, if you want to give the, the quick overview of what that is... Oh, sure, absolutely. Um, are, we, are we filming yet? <laughs> we, are, we, we have been for a little bit, ever oh, since yeah, you oh, had yeah. the first beer. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> uh, when, when am I supposed to take my clothes off? Uh, that comes later. Okay, good. And so do you. Okay, good, good. <laughs> I was worried. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah That's so, why it's a leather couch it wipes off. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if if that couch could off. talk... Holy crap! <laughs> and the couch and the cushions don't flip either. They're those cheaper ones. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. All right. um, yeah, we're working on a pilot for a TV show called Chasing Spirits. It's uh, I had the idea a couple of years ago whenever I was doing a uh, ghost hunt in an old mental hospital and um, I was of course drunk as shit. Can we say shit on here? You can say shit, fuck, whatever you want. Okay. Yeah. You can say fuck on the internet? Oh, yeah. What? Yeah. Get out. All right, give me some of this internet. You can show <laughs> balls, but I don't recommend it. No. All right. I think Chad's got that cornered anyway. <laughs> yeah, he's got that market down. But, uh, but so you guys are working on that together? Is that... But, yeah, but, yeah, it's the, um, yeah, I was in this asylum, uh, and I banged my head really hard on this, like, low-hanging pipe, and thought... <laughs> That's what we'll call it. And it made this, like sound like the Taco Bell commercials and it was so funny and uh, I thought man this really somebody needs to be filming this and I just thought of all the, the the shows about ghost hunting that are on right now and how they're all the same I mean I'll take themselves very seriously and yeah which is even funnier considering how scripted they all seem it's just so fake and staged and just it's redundant and uh, I got back to the house and was like Dirks dude huh, let's, let's do a TV show let's do a TV show about <laughs> drunk ghost hunting and it he was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will yeah. say the name and the concept are kind of what made me go, all right, I'll see what these guys... Because like, I saw your original, like, um, internet, hey, help us out kind of oh, yeah, trailer thing. And I was worried at first, because the very beginning of it seemed really... Serious. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> yeah. really? These guys are taking this shit this seriously? <laughs> yeah. And then it went into its own, and I was like, oh, okay, good. I was like, because <laughs> this, this shit could have gone really bad. Yeah. If it, if it had been nothing but... We were really intense and, and really <laughs> serious about this. I was so worried when I first saw it, so... Well, once uh, once I saw the rest of it, and then you and I talked, I was way more, I was way more on board. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's kind of like a, I mean, it, there needs at least needs to be like one kind of character on the show that like takes the the paranormal investigation like very seriously for that. The straight guy. Yeah, yeah. Was, Everything. Like, everybody needs a straight guy. And then every, that'll be me, and then everybody's gonna pick on me. Wait, you're gonna be the straight guy? Yeah. Well, he's gonna be the drunk. I'll be guy. the drunk. <laughs> But we're all going to be drunk, but I'm going to be the drunk believer, and everyone else is going to be either skeptics, I guess. skeptic or in the middle, undecided. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm the one that's the believer, and the punch. And you back. agreed to this, huh? Uh, <laughs> he gets, he gets tentatively. He gets tentatively. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's why nothing's come to fruition yet. Yeah, I'm just, <laughs> and he's still <laughs> remaining neutral. Yeah, I've, what, I've done two ghost hunts. Yeah, we did, what, Bunny Man Bridge, and, uh... The Penhurst slips. Oh, we, we, the the footage we filmed at oh, Penhurst yeah. and the footage didn't turn out. It got erased. Ooh, what? Spooky. Yeah. Oh. Could be the fifteen year old camera I was using. Yeah, but well. <laughs> I think it was the ghost. <laughs> I'm gonna say it was the ghost. Probably a ghost. Makes for better television. Yeah. Although then now you have nothing to show, so I don't know if that so makes for better television <laughs> or not. We can just like watch like. The static, static and talk about it and be like, oh, there's a ghost, there's a ghost, there's a boob, there's a ghost. It's like the scrambled porn from back in the day. Like, that's an elbow, I think. I know that's a boob. And, uh, that's totally a boob. Yeah, that's totally a boob. No, he's got a pimple on his elbow. <laughs> Damn it. So it's in the, let's say, pre production stage then? We do have a. But you filmed some, yeah. We, we do have a pretty good amount of footage. 
um, that I'm putting together and we once the Guar Bar Indiegogo is finished and all that's done. Oh yeah, I was gonna head to, how much longer does that Indiegogo for the Guar Bar have? Less than two weeks now. Yeah. yeah. How how close are you guys? <laughs> I'm not halfway yet there yet. Yeah. So well maybe this will help. Yeah. Not that I have a whole lot of followers. <laughs> I expect um, that's the whole reason I'm doing this because he promised it was like thousands. Yeah. Well, I am. I'm going to be promoting the shit out of it. So. Um, <laughs> you get dozens of. But yeah, um, hundreds <laughs> of eyeballs, <laughs> yes. which breaks down to fifties of people. <laughs> it's well into the, the tens. It's well into the teens. <laughs> Who wants to marry a hundred air? <laughs> oh, but Indiegogo slash Gorbar go. You can um, contribute, get all kinds of cool perks. Like uh, you can. Get a cooking class for me. Yeah, I saw some of the uh, some of the prizes on there. Were I like the uh, one dollar would be uh, undying scorn. Yeah, undying scorn, and then what was it? Twenty five dollars will acknowledge your existence. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one too. I do like that. Those are funny. Um, you got an Indiegogo for the chasing spirits though too, right? Or did uh, that end? That, that, that the the first one ended. Uh, yeah, it got us a. a Infrared camera, didn't it? We did. We did uh, do it in Indiegogo. It didn't reach the entire goal, but it did manage to buy us a full spectrum HD camera. Uh, so we, which I mean, we've been using to get. It's yeah. I've, we've been using stuff. We did film the thing at the National Theater. Uh, yeah, you had said something about that being haunted or something too. In the, the nursery room. That has a fantastic urban legend. It's, yeah. It's, well, that's it's a good one. Yeah. It's, Really so, but you're gonna start up a new one for that too. Yeah, another one. Our uh, our intention is uh, basically once we really need three cameras. Yeah. With the cast of, uh, we're looking at having five people on the cast. Now you had said something too about rotating uh, band members or musicians through too, like as your. Uh, yeah, it's we'll, we'll keep five permanent and then have a a sixth spot open as a rotating spot. Yeah. So uh, if we visit the West Coast or Canada. New York, whoever's closest Miami, kind of thing. We can like kind of reach out to people who are interested and in, uh, get celebrities and bring them in, uh, musicians. That's actors. exactly. You need iced tea on a ghost <laughs> or cocoa, yeah, cocoa on a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice. We need ghost face killer. That's what we. Ah, there you go. Happens. Bring his peeps. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so that's the next project, and it's still up in the air. It's yeah. Once this settles down and uh, well that's the thing you guys you know everybody war especially gets pulled in so many different directions with the stuff you guys do it's right. it's gonna be uh, you're gonna have to fight for his yeah, his attention for his time <laughs> for his time yeah especially once the restaurant opens shit yeah you're planning on making that the full your full time thing yeah definitely it's gonna be my oh, what does that do for for touring and stuff like that, you guys. Well, still... we're still gonna tour. I mean, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna be executive chef, but I'm gonna have a head chef there who yeah. handles everything for me that I trust. It. So you got? How are you guys working on any plans for touring stuff, or is that? Yeah, um, still early. We're actually planning on touring this fall. Um, Mike Bishop, who's the original Beefcake, is rejoining the band um, for a time to be um, a. He's gonna be singing with us, and like we're creating a new character for him. We're kind of Gore's kind of going back to more of the ensemble type mm -hmm. version of Gore, where we'd have a lot of different characters. There was well, a I, period, yeah. We got like really weird and grandiose theater type stuff for a period in the '90s, and like we're gonna kind of try that again. So there's less focus on the you know a front a single front man. Yeah. You know, well, I know the original, supposedly, and this is, again, reading stuff on the internet, and everything's true on the internet, the uh, the original plan was that it would continue on past everybody as people would just rotate through. Yeah. Kind of yeah. like the characters would live on, or the, uh, the concept would live on, regardless of who was playing who, or who was doing what, right? Yeah, I mean, the saddest thing is, like, I had so many conversations with Dave in the past couple of years about, like... Dave um, had intended to retire it after the 30th anniversary tour, and he was planning on picking out his replacement. And... Well, at least the things he cared about can live on in a lot of the stuff you guys are doing, which is awesome. So, um, kudos for that, and 
everything because if there's one thing uh, I'm proud to say is Iguars from Richmond because I'm a, I'm a transplant to Richmond, but I consider myself a Richmonder all the way now because when I was transplanted here, I was way too, young, way too yeah. young to be have any allegiances to anything else. So yeah. definitely uh, proud to say anytime anybody asks, well, who's come from Richmond? Well, now I can rattle off a shit ton of people, so oh, they, yeah. they can suck it. <laughs> yeah, the list is growing, definitely. It's... Oh, yeah. So the more of these things that, that get big and things like Guar Bar, I mean, you guys are getting all sorts of news and press and shit like that everywhere, so... And Break, Breaking Bad came out of Richmond, too. Yeah. yeah. Really? Kind of a big deal. Yeah, that writer... Um, oh, the writer, writer yeah. I, was like, yeah. I thought it was in New Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I missed something. Yeah, no, we got the meth lab just down the street. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the original slate pit. <laughs> I stopped in the meth lab before I picked them up. <laughs> so that's... I mean, I'm, I'm excited. Um, you guys want to list the... Um, Indiegogo thing again, just to cover that websites, all that stuff. I'm gonna probably put links to all that stuff at the end of the, cool. yeah, the yeah, footage it's... and stuff too. But go for broke. Indiegogo slash core bar or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get the specifics. Is, go to guar dot net. Yeah, yeah, yeah there's that too. That's one stop shopping for everything. And uh, barbecue is August. August sixteenth. Sixteenth. And there's gonna be a um, open memorial to the public for. Dave on the 15th at Haddad's Lake. It's going to be a badass. Oh, yeah. We're going to have a Viking funeral where we push the boat out into Haddad's Lake. Nice. Set it, his costume on fire. and Sweet. That's going to be awesome. Haddad signed off on all that, yeah, well, too, huh? Yeah. It's actually a memorial. <laughs> it's a memorial to Odorous because it's the Odorous, Odorous costume. Yeah. 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 Very cool. Um, I'm guessing all that information's on the website, too, right? Yep. Yep. And Chasing Spirits. Oh. Huh? <laughs> Wake up, man. Okay. Um, Chasing Spirits is coming as it's, soon as it can come. <laughs> as, soon as, as soon as I learn how to read. Um, I didn't learn to read. No, it's, uh, there's nothing going on right now as far as the, uh, the, the fundraising. Um, until that's over, I don't want to put anything out there oh, yeah. and distract. Well, me. you're doing stuff in the background, though, which is so, good. Because yeah, I, I noticed you've yeah. been hitting a lot of spots. and yeah, yeah, But there's a like Chasing Spirits Facebook page that... It's, Everyone should go like, and then they'll be updated as soon as there's anything to know on it. And it's uh, yeah, just look for just go to Facebook, look up uh, Chasing Spirits, and you'll see a logo of a, an overturned beer bottle with a ghost coming out of it. Very great. That's shouldn't it be a liquor bottle? It well, it's an, it doesn't. No, it's not kidding. labeled. It, <laughs> it's it not, can be a liquor. You bottle. You said beer. You said beer. You could put any. You could put. It could be a wine it's bottle. A booze bottle. It's a booze generic bottle. booze bottle. Put the three X's on it. It's a generic yeah. ghost. <laughs> it does have the three X's. Everything does have the X's. Should. Oh, it doesn't. Yeah. It will now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I appreciate it. Thanks for coming out and toasting and drinking some beer. Absolutely. Talking about what you got going on. Uh, it's been fun. I appreciate it. Cool. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, man.